Following up on historic acceptance rate of mail-in ballots, I bring before you today new analysis shows Biden winning nearly impossible margins on mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania. As we know, there was about a 30 times acceptance rate of ballots, while there were nearly 10 times as many ballots submitted, and many of them from first-timers, which we will see later is has an, a lot higher uh, decline rate. It says here, there has been a lot of focus on the number of mail-in ballots counted in Pennsylvania and the illegal state Supreme Court decisions that enabled them. But what is even more important to examine is the impossible margins Joe Biden would have achieved just among those in ma mail-in ballots and just in Pennsylvania in order to obtain the unofficial lead he currently has. Here are the facts. We know that 2.6 million mail-in ballots have been counted in Pennsylvania election returns in addition to nearly 4.2 million election day votes. We also know from the Secretary of State that Trump won election day votes 2.7 million to 1.4 million, but we are to believe that Biden won 76% of mail-in ballots. So I did the math here on uh, the percentage that Trump would have won in, uh, of those ballots in, on election day. And as we can see, that is about 51, about 52% total of people who turned out there to vote for Trump, 52% of the overall. Yet somehow with historic uh, acceptance rate of mail-in ballots, Biden happened to win 76% of the overall of mail-in ballots returned there. It also states, yes, mail-ins overwhelmingly skew Democrat, like election day votes skewed Republican, but as we see, it was 52% on election day for Republican. But they were not all from Democrats, we know that 64.7% of the votes were from registered Democrats, 23.7% from Republicans, and 11.6% from nonpartisan or other party voters. And I can tell you, I haven't met a single Republican who ha has said that they had voted for Joe Biden. What does this mean in simple arithmetic? My friend crunched the numbers and showed that has had Biden won 95% of returned Democrat mail-in votes, 21% of returned Republican votes and 80% of, of returned independent votes, he would still have come up short on his margin of victory, reported in the official tally. So here we have it links to Twitter. Uh, he, he sort of displays it here. As we can see, Biden has 1.9 million 900, or what am I saying? 1,995,691 absentee ballot votes here. Trump with 595,538 and Jorgensen with 24,000, which adds up to that 2.6 million total that we were talking about. As uh, it, sh it shows here, the actual number of returned ballots, 1,702,000 1, for uh, Democrats, 623,000 for Republicans, and 303,000 for uh, independents. So we also know the percentage of the total of these that were returned for Biden, 64.8% of Democrats. 23.7% of Republicans, and 11.5% of Independent and others. And here's the theoretical breakdown of voting pattern by party affiliation. So if we were to take 95% of these votes returned for Biden, 1,702,623, that would give us 1,617,492 uh, Biden votes. If we take 21%, which is a very generous number to say the least. I mean, I was, a, I'm obviously a Republican and I voted by mail even. My family did. And I can tell you, I didn't vote for Biden. Ohio, baby. We swung like, what, 8% or some shit? I don't know. And independent and others, 303,080% of those voting for Biden. Which I could see a hefty bit of independents voting for Biden, but not nearly 80%. There are many people who I know that consider themselves independent. Uh, obviously, I'm from Ohio as well, though, a different state, but 80%? Now, that seems to be half the amount, a very generous amount, again, even more so than the Republican amount. And even then, that would add up to 1,991,112, 4,000 away, or 4,500 away from what Biden currently had there. And these are very generous numbers. As we will see later from uh, exit polls, they they definitely don't don't add up in my mind. Here it says we know those numbers alone are absurd. There is no way Biden won 21 percent of mail-in ballots from registered Republicans in this state. Exit polls showed Biden getting just eight percent of the GOP vote overall. 
while the 92 or while the 95 percent number for democrat mail-ins is more believable which i do agree exits showed him getting 92 percent the notion that 80 percent of mail-ins from independence went to biden is nearly impossible which is exactly my thoughts on it how is it possible that 80 percent of these people swung for biden i mean you have to think that number is nearly half of the amount of republicans that evidently voted for biden yet it is four times the amount that is pretty wild four times the percent i mean assuming the mail-ins broke down oh wait i'm sorry wrong one exit polls showed biden winning 52 percent of votes for independence overall it would defy logic to think that there was such a qualitative gap between the two between the type of independents who came out on election day and those who voted by mail Obviously, I could see a swing towards Biden for mail-in votes rather than the people who went in to vote because Republicans are more likely to go in and vote. However, a, sw a swap of 30%, that is a huge margin of, of uh, voting. I find that, as this article states, nearly impossible to happen. Assuming the mail-ins broke down in accordance with the exit polls, Biden would be down by 213,000 votes, even if every one of the uh, 2.6 million mail-ins were truly valid and had proper matching signatures which i mean come on you have places like georgia where they do the recount but they don't require you to actually match the signatures with the envelopes and and it's just such a blunder honestly and speaking of signature validation this statistical anomaly should lend a lot of suspicion to the already questionable a questionably low rejection rate of mail-in ballots this year According to 2016 Election Administration and Voting Survey, the rejection rate last election was just a tad under 1% in the Keystone State, even though there were only 266,000 mail-in ballots, 10 times less ballots, but as we will see, okay, let me read on, which are mainly those who are experiencing filling out absentee, which are mainly those who have experience filling out absentee ballots. This year with 2.6 million mail-ins, consisting primarily of first-time voters, we are to believe that just 0.038% were invalid, which I will tell you I am not believing that. Some estimates show that first-time ballots are that mail-in ballots from first-timers are three times more likely to be rejected, yet we are to believe the acceptance rate this year was 27 times higher than in 2016. So I have here an article from just the news it says partial tally of rejected pennsylvania mail ballots raises question as observers await final data in pennsylvania a state where historically average rate of rejected mail-in ballots in this year's election could significantly erode joe biden's lead over president donald trump i don't see how they're historically average they are not average at all a partial tally of such rejections has observers primed to analyze final data from in the state the nonpartisan United States Election Project research site maintained by University of Florida professor Michael McDonald reports 1,009 rejected mail-in ballots out of the total 2,615,045. So just 1,009 ballots rejected. Wow. Out of all of those ones. That seems st another statistical anomaly. I mean, almost... I hate to say the word impossible because nothing's impossible if you believe, except for this. This is the one thing I might deem impossible, or a rate of 0.038%. However, the few rejected ballots reported here, the site cautions, are for first-time voters who did not provide required ID with their mailed ballot or missing a signature. So first-time voters, all right, I'll continue reading. I'm sorry, I keep getting ahead of myself. The historical rate of mail-in ballot rejection generally hovers around 1%. For first-time mail-in voters, the rate can jump as high as 3%. And as we know, a ton of these people were first-time voters. I mean, 10 times more people voting mail-in, which is different than voting in person. Yet somehow, the that doesn't correlate as, at all. There should be a higher rate of rejection, obviously, and especially with first-time voters. So clearly, that is a significant margin, and I am unsure as to how... These people magically uh, knew how to fill out their ballots this time. And this is also a state accused of sending ballots back, uh, allowing their uh, participants to cure their ballots. So it seems a bit odd that these first-time voters knew exactly what to do when typically they are three times more likely to mess up their ballots.
almost as if they just accepted the ballot no matter what if it were incorrect. Leaves off on a uh, postulation here. Can you imagine what we would find if there was an attempt to audit and match all 2.6 million ballots for valid signatures and other information? Even Barack Obama during his March 2018 prim or 2008 primary with Hillary Clinton raised concerns about the need to verify signatures on mail-in ballots. However, that is unneeded in places like Georgia, right there, Raffensperger. Mm. We just need to, to read the ballots, and that's it. We don't need to match the signatures with the envelopes. We can have them looking like they're fresh off the press, still warm even. I'll have a ballot in my hand, burning my hands up because it's fresh off the printer, but that's fine. We don't need to match signatures at all because that's unimportant in this election. But as Barack Obama has stated prior, it is very important to match the signatures on the ballot and the envelope but not this time around because it's completely different. The safest election ever. All right, well, I'm going to end it on that one. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.